I'm right in front of the door. Oh, that's the kind of bullshit I'm talking about. Welcome back everyone. To start off the new year, I decided to do something extra special for this video. A retrospective and a review. We'll be checking out Evil Genius and Evil Genius 2 World Domination. We'll start off with Evil Genius. Released in 2004, this real-time strategy simulation game was published by Vivendi Games and developed by Elixir Studios. Evil Genius is still fun and addicting. I found myself losing track of time and would keep telling myself just one last thing only to notice I kept playing for another couple hours. Almost like that feeling you get when playing Civilization games. However, before we begin, a few disclaimers. Normally you can only have a maximum of 100 minions. However, I went into the game files and modified it to let me have a maximum of 500. I really needed this because the final objectives are really challenging, despite playing on easy. I also enabled cheat codes, but only use them to help finish the game faster. However, if you aren't careful, the game could bug out and softlock you from finishing. So let's go become... An evil genius! There is a tutorial that helps inform you the basics of the game. It does a great job of telling you the controls and the gameplay. By the end, you'll be ready to start a new game. That's about all I have to tell you. Oh, no, what are you doing? Please, no, I'm sure I can still be of use to you. Have mercy! No! I never liked you anyway. <laughs> you choose from three different evil geniuses, Maximilian, Alexis, and Shen. Each does have something special about them, such as Max is supposed to reduce cash incentives, Alexis' minions lose their loyalty stats slower, Shen has something to do with agents have a slower response time, each also starts with a different henchman. Max starts with a samurai called Jubei, Shen gets Lord Kane, and my personal favorite, Alexis gets Eli Barracuda. How fair, babe? Oh yeah. That's right, baby. Right on, boo! Each henchman is unique, but word of advice, never get Red Ivan. Don't you f***ing thugging it! How unnecessary is this, Red? Don't f***ing walk away as if- Ah, uh, that's all your issues. Look at him, he's like, I don't be problem, you sort, you sort problem out. What the f*** was that about? I pick Shen and head to the first island. I recommend hitting P to pause the game. You can still watch tutorial videos to learn more about the game, but we need to start building a base. Here's where you need to get creative. If it's your first time, don't worry. Start small, try each room. When you've played the game a few times, you'll learn some good designs. For example, you don't need every room to be separate. Some can be right next to each other, and some don't need to be as big as others. I doubt my layout is the most efficient, but that's why I love coming back to Evil Genius, trying out new designs. Just follow the main objective and you'll slowly advance through the game, and get more advanced minions. The beginning will feel really slow, so be patient, the game will get better. You start off with construction workers, who are the only ones that can build rooms. You get a new one every 60 seconds for free. You can move this slider to get more faster, but it'll cost you. After you plan a layout and hit the build icon, your workers run over to your strong room, grab a briefcase full of money, then run over to this structure to buy dynamite, then go and place it to build the room. Then if you placed any items, the workers will do the same thing, grab a briefcase, run to the building, and then place the item. Once you get a training room up, your workers then can branch off into three different types of minions, military, science, and social. But first you need to get a control room built and control panels. This will unlock the overworld. Here you will send your minions out to capture and create more advanced minions. There's also acts of infamy which increases your overall notoriety. You can also grab items which will be important for research later on. But also putting these items around your base help keep your minion stats up. Oh right, stats. Really quick, red is health. Obviously if that hits zero, the minion dies and is gone. Blue is loyalty. At zero, the minion will leave your organization. Yellow is smarts. They stop working and scratch their heads. A valet will take them to... The library! To get smart again. Purple is attention. This means your minions may accidentally trigger traps. And finally, green is condition. 
At zero, they fall unconscious. A valet will take them to the barracks to rest up. That's basically the game. Slowly keep expanding your base, train more minions, then send them out to the world and commit acts of infamy. Of course, there are people who will try to stop you. These people are called the Forces of Justice. There's five nations to deal with. Patriot is America and Japan, Hammer is Soviet Russia and Cuba, Anvil is China and the Southeast Indies, Sabre is Europe, South Africa, India, and Australia, then finally Smash, which is South America, North Africa, Middle East, and Antarctica. Each nation will send different types of enemies at you. There's investigators who scout around looking for evidence to send back, saboteurs who will look to destroy important parts of your base like generators or your control room, thieves who steal your money or items you've stolen from them, and finally soldiers who come to destroy your facility. Each nation has a different look, but they do the same. However, each has four different grades, pathetic, poor, good, and exceptional. So if you're doing too many acts of infamy, your heat meter goes all the way up. That nation will send their best soldiers at you. This can be really bad if a large group of them land outside your base and shoot your minions on sight. This is when I would cheat and blow them up. Despite playing on easy, they can still easily take out your minions and set you back many hours until you can refill your numbers. Finally, each nation has a super agent, which will appear once your notoriety hits certain points during the game. They are tough to deal with and easily take out your minions on the world map and on your island. You also need to be extra careful with your henchmen, because if a henchman is knocked out by a super agent, the henchman loses a life. If all three lives are lost, the henchman is killed and gone forever. The first is Mariana Mamba from Smash. Super agents are extra special and will act like two types of agents. She will behave like a saboteur and a thief. She also has a special ability, Savage Allure, which forces a minion to desert. She's most likely a reference to Halle Berry in Die Another Day. Next is Jet Chan from Anvil. He will behave like a soldier and a thief. His special ability is dodging bullets. He's clearly a reference to Jet Li and Jackie Chan. Next is Katarina Frostonova from Hammer, and she behaves like a soldier and investigator. Her special ability is Cold Assassin, where she turns invisible and can instantly kill a target. I'm not sure what she might be a reference to. Comment below what you guys think. Next is Dirk Masters from Patriot. He behaves like a soldier and a saboteur. His special ability is Suppression Fire, which allows him to shoot with both of his giant guns hitting more than one minion. He's clearly a reference to... <laughs> Finally, we get Steel. John Steel. From Saber. He behaves like an investigator and saboteur. His special ability is Base Mayhem, which causes your doors to change security settings and change your alarm status. I'll get into later how to defeat each of them. Let me walk you through the main objectives. Starting off is very simple. You need to build a barracks and a control room, so get to it. Then build an interrogation chair to turn your minion into a valet. <laughs> While you build up your forces, build an inner sanctum to have a conference table. Then start searching around the world and do acts of infamy. Look to kidnap a security guard and technician. Build a training room and put in some desks, punching bags, and lab workshops. This will help train more valets, guards, and technicians. If all of them ever die, you'll need to kidnap a new one from the map. Once you have something like 10 plus technicians, send 5 of them to the west coast and set them to plotting. After some time, you'll discover the American Crime Lord. Then look for the next two Crime Lords in India and North China. Once you have all three at your island, the fourth one will arrive, but you need to capture him. Then build a mess hall and send him to be interrogated at the counter with a mixer. <laughs> Next one requires your notoriety to be at least 70, so continue doing more acts of infamy. Then send technicians to plot in the Middle East until the fifth crime lord shows up. Last one will send waves of workers at you, so just tag these unique workers to kill. Send your evil genius to sit at the conference room and he will reveal his evil plan. Check out the map, and there's an act of infamy in Japan you need to do. This will unlock the laboratory. You then get a choice of research equipment. I recommend the Impact Stress Analyzer, because researching the chalkboard with this equipment will unlock the nuclear reactor which is the best thing for the generator room. 
To find the other research equipment, just plot on Central America, North Europe, and Australia. Now go look for a scientist to kidnap, and put plenty of chalkboards in the training room. Next you should build a shack outside your entrance and build a lab to put a fake research machine in it. It might take a while, so just be patient. Now you should get the Spin Doctor and Mercenary. Also look for 4 out of the 6 Uber loot. You should try and grab all 6 of them and put them all around your base. Pause the video to write this down and go get them. Next you need to be earning at least $10,000 for 5 minutes straight. Send enough mercs and guards out into the overworld and set them to steal. It's best to put them in Europe, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and the Midwest. They give you the most money. Now you need to do many things. First is the forces of justice will keep sending soldiers at you. Capture just one of these soldiers and interrogate them for information on the Doomsday data. You'll know if they have this information when you left click on them, and this icon is next to them. Next get your notoriety to 200, and then look for the Doomsday data located on North Africa, Australia, and Cuba. It's best to get all 9 because you'll be missing one research equipment if you don't. After that, you'll be able to move to a new island. I made the mistake of not getting the third research equipment, which screwed me over later on. So make sure you've gotten everything researched, or at least most of it, before you're moving on. When you're ready, hit the button on the world map, and your minions will start packing up all your loot and head for the depot. Do be careful because enemies can still kill you and your minions, but your minions won't fight back, so this is a very vulnerable position for you. Once all your minions are through, click your evil genius to leave. A quick cutscene plays of you heading to a new island, so now you get to start over again. At least this base is much bigger. However, the helicopter pad and docks are on completely different sides, so it might be good to have two entrances. It's entirely up to you, so go crazy. And remember to hit P if you want to pause the game and spend a lot of time planning out your base, and not worry about the forces of justice arriving while you're occupied. Once you've got your base built and items placed, start looking to kidnap a diplomat, marksman, quantum physicist, and biochemist. Then plot in Siberia to find the Codex of Knowledge. Then kidnap a mercenary scientist also in Siberia. He will go and spend time researching the Codex in the lab. Just wait for him to finish, then kill him when he tries to escape. Now you need to pick which machine to research the Codex on. You have these options. Once finished, click on the big open cave and build the rocket cavern. Okay, so first thing you need to do is capture the diplomats arriving on the island. Interrogate them, then plant a diplomat of your own in each nation. Here's where they're located. Now this is where things can get out of hand. You need to get 25 crates of a resource. You can get all 25 from just one, or get 5 from these locations. Doesn't matter which one, but you can quickly generate heat which causes a lot of soldiers to show up at your island. And I mean a lot will start showing up. Oh my god, just stop spawning in. Sometimes landing right in front of your entrance and begin killing your minions as they leave. There's so many, they can easily kill your minions within seconds. This is where I would cheat and set off explosions to kill them off before wiping out my minions. If you can survive long enough to do this and construct all five parts, you'll finish the objective. However, this is where I got softlocked. Because I unlocked everything, I couldn't build any of the pieces, so I was forever stuck here. Objective 8. You have three options to do this. You can capture a cosmonaut who's on your island. So when you capture him and interrogate him, you need to pick things that will lower his smarts, attention, and health twice. This is what I did, and it's easy. I made him go through the mixer in the mess hall to lose his smarts, the environmental chamber to lose his health, an AI computer for his attention in the lab. Once you do that, construct the satellite in the rocket cavern. Plot in North Africa until you find the plans for the engine and then send diplomats and playboys to steal it. Now you need to build a TV studio in your inner sanctum and five transceiver antennas. The forces of justice will try to destroy them, so do your best to protect them. Then build a catwalk if you haven't, and build a console to have your evil genius interact with it. Then have your evil genius go to the TV studio to broadcast his ultimatum like any villain does. The final objective is simple. Just hold out for 12 minutes while your rocket is being assembled. When the timer hits zero, a big red button should show up, but on one of my playthroughs it didn't, so I had to reload a save. While this is going on, capture John Steele. You'll get a little extra cutscene. You did it. You took over the world. Depending on which Doomsday device you picked, you get three colored endings. Just like Mass Effect 3. Except better. The gravity disruptor pulls everyone to the moon. The earthquake causes lots of destruction. 
and the ID Eliminator turns everyone into construction workers. Then a cutscene of your evil genius with all the world leaders. So what about those pesky super agents? They're annoying on the world map and annoying when they show up on your island. Starting with Mariana, her defeat objective will show up as soon as you arrive on the second island. Make sure you have a biochemist. Just capture her and then interrogate her on an infirmary chair. You'll watch her become fat and run away. Next, Jet Chan's objective will appear during Objective 7. You need to plot on Central Asia until you find Jet Chan's mentor. Kidnap him and then interrogate him. You'll then need to capture Jet Chan, then interrogate him at a dojo. He will lose the fight and leave in shame. Or through a hole in my floor? Next is Katarina. It should appear after completing Objective 7. You need to plot in Siberia and should find Mr. Snuggles. Bring him back to base and then capture Katarina. You make her watch the killing of Mr. Snuggles, which causes her to run away. Next is Dirk Masters, which should trigger after completing Objective 8. You need to find his sweaty towel located in the Midwest. Bring it back and research it using the biotanks. Then capture Dirk and interrogate him using the biotanks as well. He will become a freak and patrol your base like a minion. John Steele can never be defeated early, but he does deserve to be launched into space for all the trouble he's caused. And that's Evil Genius. Still a fantastic game. Now let's review Evil Genius 2 World Domination. Released in March of 2021, this sequel was published and developed by Rebellion Developments, who made games like Aliens vs Predator, Sniper Elite, and Zombie Army. Let's talk a little history since this sequel came out 17 years after the first. When Elixir Studios shut down in 2005, Rebellion bought all of their intellectual property rights. Rebellion did re-release the game on digital platforms like Steam and GOG. Then Rebellion released Evil Genius Online for iOS and Android, similar to most mobile games as you would expect. It played a lot like the original game, but progressing could be sped up or bypassed with virtual currency that you could buy with real money. I don't think it was as bad as Dungeon Keeper Mobile, but still, nobody likes paywalls. Then Rebellion had addressed on Twitter they were interested in making a sequel, but weren't able to find a publisher who could help fund the game. However, they looked into alternative ways to get the game funded and created. In July of 2017, Rebellion finally announced they were developing Evil Genius 2. But it would be two years later, at E3 2019, they premiered the first trailer for the game. And even I was excited to finally see it. The release date was set for Steam in 2020. However, due to the pandemic, the game was delayed to March of 2021. In November, it got released on consoles. So graphically, they did a great job keeping the look and cartoony feel of the first game. However, the settings on Max were just too much for my computer, which shut down at one point. So make sure you visit the settings your first time booting up the game. Also, on startup, I don't know the difference between Vulcan and DX12, but I learned you can play on both. It's just DX12 is for the best computers out there, so if you're not sure how good your computer is, then just pick Vulcan. So when starting a new game, you pick what island to have your evil layer on, and pick an evil genius. This time you have four to choose from. Each one has their own unique abilities, and in this game, their own unique campaign. You start off with a cutscene and watch your evil genius get off the helicopter. Then the game begins. If you have the tutorials on, then you will get help getting started. It does a great job walking you through the basic controls, how to build rooms and items, then starts taking the training wheels off by telling you to build a room anywhere you want. So by the end, you'll know what to do and get to plan out the rest for yourself. The biggest and coolest change I love about this game is the ability to build or even rebuild your base. Seriously, this is awesome. I hope more simulation games build a system like this. So my base went from this to this. I completely redesigned my base and moved entire rooms to new locations. When you go into the build menu and begin making your changes, you'll get a new blueprint of how it will look, while also telling you how much it's going to cost and how much power it'll consume. And when you're all done planning, hit confirm and watch your minions get to work. There were times I didn't know what to do with this space. So I just put dirt back in its spot until I needed it for something else. I love this system. I wonder how difficult it was to make. So great job devs. Best of all the game still feels a lot like the first game. You progress by building more rooms, completing objectives, send minions into the world, and research new items and minions. Adding more lockers will increase maximum number of minions. 
So now you need to keep track of your minion salary. There were times I would begin a big project and spend most of my money and forget it was about to be payday. Then look at all my minions morale drop. Some would desert and try stealing my cash, but it was easy to kill them before they escaped. So just be aware of that. Another similar thing is the types of minions. You still have construction workers who focus on building and train to become specialized minions. This time they are called Muscle, Deception, and Science. The game caps out at 300, but don't worry, 300 is plenty of minions. No need to modify any files like I did for the first. As you play, you'll learn more about advanced minions through the secondary story. Your main objective is your evil genius's story, and taking over the world. I just recently beat Max's story, and he's trying to take over the world by turning people into gold. I can't wait to replay and see what the other three have planned. Now the world map plays out a little different from the first. Before you would send minions out and do acts of infamy or steal money, but those minions stay out in the field and you can at least call them back. In this game you need to first send them out to establish a base. Once these minions head out, they are gone, and you can't request them to come back. You're basically consuming minions when you send them out, so you'll need to retrain new ones. Each base will have a cash income, but you can also choose to send out minions to do schemes, which are missions to get more cash, remove heat in the area, to recruit more minions. However, you can only do one scheme in the area at a time. If the heat meter hits 100%, the area goes on lockdown for two minutes, and the forces of justice will send investigators to your island. This is basically the gameplay loop, and I had a lot of fun with it. There is the return with super agents, and my favorite is Agent X. You're an enemy of freedom. You hate truth. And the apple pie at your hotel is subpar at best. You see these shotguns? I named them Truth and Justice. <laughs> so I guess you could say I'm sticking to my guns. However, I felt the super agents in the first game were a lot more of a threat but perhaps I need to play on a harder difficulty to really feel the devastation of these new super agents. You do have a casino to take some extra cash from tourists, and your valets will man the tables and even sing like they're on American Idol. You also use it to keep investigators out of your base, and after a while they will give up and go away. Or you can capture them and have them interrogated in order to get the resource intel, which is for doing certain schemes on the world map, or brainwash them to recruit them as minions. However, if the investigators find something and take a picture, then get out, then depending on what pictures they took will determine what agents they send. This could be thieves, saboteurs, or soldiers will come to attack your lair. A new thing the forces of justice can do is disguise themselves which you might not notice, however they still move in a unique way, so always be on the lookout. If not, they might just sneak into your base and cause problems. There are lots of traps, but honestly I only ever tried a few. However, go look up videos, and people have created some pretty hilarious trap designs. When it comes to henchmen, you don't start with any this time. You must recruit them. Eli Barracuda's son can be recruited, Eli Barracuda Jr., but Juby is still alive along with many new henchmen. Now, there is some DLC, and even a season pass to the game. I haven't purchased any of the DLC, and I had a great time with just the base game. It's got enough content to keep you engaged. The DLC, in my opinion, will add small new experiences, but nothing like Paradox games that overhaul the game and add entire new systems. Those pieces of DLC feel necessary to make the game better, but not here. At least, hopefully not yet. One cool DLC is creating abominations. When minions or agents die, they turn into body bags. So your minions pick it up and take it to an incinerator. But with this DLC, your minions take those bodies and put it into a machine that creates an abomination to solely protect your base. Not necessary, but I could see that being a fun twist to mix things up in the future. I did hear, at the time of this video, the next DLC is going to be a new evil genius with their own unique campaign. If I had to give it a score, I would give Evil Genius 2 an 8 out of 10. The reason for deducting points is I really don't like these dialogue cutscenes. I don't think they needed to pause the game and force me to watch. Just let the dialogue play while I'm still playing. If I want to listen, then I can just pause the game myself. Also the balancing. By the late game, I had everything researched, and I was pretty much just fast forwarding through the game to finish it. But again, I probably just need to raise the difficulty to make the late game more of a challenge. In conclusion. Evil Genius is still a great game, 
When modified and using cheat codes, you will still have a great relaxing experience. Until something like this happens. You may find yourself with some downtime, so I understand this might not be for everyone. However, it's still addicting and does feel like a mobile game, but that's what Evil Genius Online is for if you like actual paywalls and want to spend your money on microtransactions. However, I keep coming back to it every year and replay through it because it's such a uniquely fun game. So pick this game up on any Steam sale, then also pick up Evil Genius 2 World Domination while you're at it. It's a great sequel, making great changes and improvements to enhance the experience. So pick them both up, or I would say at least play Evil Genius 2. You'll get the same feeling from the first, but much more streamlined and less downtime. There's always something you could be doing to expand your base or advance to the next set of objectives. Next month is going to be an RTS, and I heard it's getting reforged, but it's not going to be like Warcraft 3. Tune in next month to find out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on what you thought. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.